So I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, one of the water quality parameters that is probably, I think, overlooked. Um, I guess we all get carried away through the summer testing dissolved oxygen and perhaps ammonia to see what the contribution of the feed and, and the fish waste and how the fish are contributing to that ammonia level perhaps but and maybe even the, the breakdown of that ammonia into nitrite and nitrate you might test for that as well but generally pH isn't really tested in fisheries as standard but it actually has probably the biggest influence on the productivity and fertility of our fisheries so uh, I wanted to sort of discuss this a bit more and uh, really sort of go into a little bit more depth on how it affects your fishery and uh, what we can do to really balance that out and make our fisheries as fertile as possible. So generally, our fish want a pH value of between 6.5 to about 8. So from that, you can probably already understand that they have a higher tolerance to alkaline waters than they do acidic. So um, generally, your acidic waters will be more sort of peat soils. Generally, in peat areas, you'll get uh, a lot of moss growing because not a lot else grows in particularly acidic soil. So, so below sort of 4.5, 5, pH 5 quite acidic soil you'll get moss growing um, and that's how you sort of characterize those areas um, and then you've got more alkaline waters in areas of limestone sort of gravel pits areas like that where the, the water's calcifying as it, it filters through the ground um, and then into your lakes is going to be more of a hard water through limestone areas um, and that is going to have a, a higher pH value more alkaline. So the first point to understand is the impact of pH on the bacteria. The healthy bacteria in our ponds, the aerobic bacteria that's breaking down ammonia into nitrite and into nitrate and then into uh, food for the water for algae and weeds to use. So the more acidic the water, that aerobic bacteria, Nitrosomonas and Nitrobacter, their reproductive rate is reduced in more acidic waters. So that nitrogen cycle is going to be less efficient if that bacteria can't reproduce fast enough. The more bacteria you've got, the quicker that process is going to happen and the quicker organic material is going to be broken down. And for point number two, you've got the impact on invertebrates and aquatic life. So the more acidic the water, the less aquatic life there is generally. So naturally in the water, your, your water can hold metal molecules and they are dissolved in acidic water which become toxic to invertebrates and damaging to fish gills. So the fish's response is generally that they'll produce more mucus on the gills to prevent irritation and damage to the, the gill lamellae. Um, and the cell wall will perhaps become slightly thickened, which will reduce the efficiency of oxygen diffusion into the blood. And the third thing to understand about pH is the pH pulse. So the, the 24 hour period, how pH is affected, is like on, on a day like today, we've got a, a good song, strong sun out, the, the weed behind me is, is respirating, photosynthesizing, producing oxygen. That, that photosynthesis process is, is using carbon dioxide, absorbing carbon dioxide out of water and producing oxygen. So through the night, oxygen is then drawn out of the water as the weed respirates and carbon dioxide is produced. When carbon dioxide is produced and mixes with water, you get carbonic acid. So that's going to impact the pH by lowering the pH into more acidic values. And then when the sun comes back up again, the weed is going to absorb that carbon dioxide again, produce oxygen, the carbonic acid is then uh, reduced and the pH values start to increase so you'll get more alkaline waters. So it's, it's a very steady sort of 24 hour rhythm that you'll get with the low pH uh, value, lower pH values during the, the nighttime hours and a higher pH values during the daytime. So those are the three key points to understand um, about pH and how it impacts your fishery and the fertility of your fishery. And there are things you can do in your management. Obviously you've got uh, calcium carbonate, that's like a, a finely ground chalk, which is obviously an alkaline 
uh, pH value, which is going to neutralize the pH of the silt and help that, those um, aerobic bacteria to reproduce and break down your back, the, the organic matter. Um, and it's going to create a more fertile environment for obviously the bacteria to do that, but also for sort of harder water and, and make your water more nutrient rich. But then you might have opportunistic algae and weed that are then going to absorb into that um, that nutrient that's become available from that application. You probably you could get uh, excessive weed or algae growth. So you've got to be very careful about the time of year you apply calcium carbonate. Uh, and it's got to be done in the, the right time of year and the right scenario. You don't want to be adding to a problem and uh, creating more issues in the summer. So uh, obviously there's other things you can do with your, your, your tree removal. We're always bang on about removing trees uh, and how they, how opening up the pond to, uh, or the water to, to light and air is going to make that nitrogen cycle more efficient and how it's going to reduce the organic loading on the pond and the effect of the pH. Um, so yeah, those are the, really the key things you can do in your management to help to keep that pH consistent. Um, and ideally slightly into alkaline rather than acidic values. Um, and really, yes, yeah, so there's a lot to learn about pH and uh, really how, how it affects fertility and productivity of your fisheries. Hopefully it's given you a, a, a few little pointers on uh, how it does impact your fishery and uh, perhaps gives you a few ideas of what you can do to help improve the fertility of your fishery.